Hi there, uh, welcome to DM Education and Soccer Academy. This is our first documentary that we're, we're going to be releasing over the next few weeks. Um, the aim of the documentary is, is to allow prospective students um, and everyone else out there really to see what we, we do here at Desert uh, and the opportunities available after school and, and also to, to look at the progression routes that our students have gone on to. So we're looking at things like HE and USA scholarships and apprenticeships so over the next few weeks uh, we'll be breaking it down into bite-sized pieces so we'll be looking at match day experiences, we'll be looking at uh, classroom and education um, and we'll also be looking at progression routes and the opportunities about, available. Can you just tell us a little bit about uh, the preparation that goes on for a match day at DESA? So this week we've got four games, uh, two taking place today, a Cat 1 and a Cat 2 game. Um, what sort of things do, do we have to prepare before these games? So obviously we have to um, you, you know, accumulate a list of all of our students. We need to firstly look at um, attendance um, and assignment handings, obviously because the education here um, comes first. If they don't do the education right, they don't play football. Um, then we then liaise with our physio um, about players that are returning from injury or have picked up knocks or have existing injuries um, and then we filter it down really and then it comes off um, training performance, previous match performance about what type of squads we pick. Um, it's not just as simple as that, we obviously here at Desert we take all competitions really really seriously um, so you want to try and compete in all of them so what we try and do is make sure that the, depending on each week uh, we get the right squad for the right game, so it's challenging for the lads, but also it's a winnable um, fixture as well. Okay, and behind the scenes, a lot of people just see what goes on um, on the football pitch, um, but behind the scenes, what sort of things go on at the football club in preparation for these games? Obviously, you have the desert staff, firstly, that, you know, obviously we're in, obviously we're, do we're doing paperwork, team sheets, uh, ref referee assignments, forms, login minutes, um, doing set pieces, doing tactical plans, setting up studio tables, all the all that jazz that is ready to get the players as um, you know have, have as much clarity as possible, ready for the game. Um, and then you've got all the people that work really really hard at the football club. So you've got Harry Muff at the groundsman, who who you'll you'll speak to or you'll see in a minute, um, working tirelessly on on the pitch. And he, you know and what maybe people don't know about him is, is the the amount of time that he has versus the the rabbits. Um, he's done such an amazing job, especially with the drought this year, um, to get that pitch looking really, really wonderful. And you've got Avril and, and all of her, her staff. Um, we've got the head chef um, of, of Deerham and Desert, um, boys lover. Um, she's in. She'll be doing beans on toast uh, for when the boys arrive. Um, she'll be cooking while the game is on. She'll be cooking all the after game meals for both opponents um, today. Um, and then you've got Donna who runs the facility. Okay, so she'll be making sure the premises is safe and, and right for us and making sure that she provides the money for the referees, etc. Um, so there's a lot that goes into it, um, you know, more than just the football. Okay, and the season started really well. Um, what do you think the secret is behind um, the success so far this season? Standards. Um, to, to be truthful, obviously good players. You need good players to do well. I think anyone would be lying if you said it was all down to other stuff. Um, good players help. Um, but standards this year, um, consistent standards, so lads not hand and working, not playing, I've mentioned that, lads that turned up, there's been a lad that turned up a minute late and was dropped from a game this year from a massive game, I think everyone was really, really shocked, obviously people were like, you can't drop him, because he's a star player, um, dropped him, went on to win the game, that player's performance since that drop in, he's been one of the best players, um, so it's been a really sort of, um, you know, but for me, this year in particular, I've been, we've upped the levels with us as well, um, and it's paying off. We've had 11 wins in a row across all competitions, which I know will come to an end, because it has to come to an end, but I think that is a reflection of what's going on off the field. Okay, so what, what about in regards to the football, the training, philosophies, um, what sort of things have you been focusing on this year? Because we're an education programme, I think, what we've tried to do is to not have this um, too much of a one-dimensional approach like professional clubs because our philosophy isn't to get kids just into a professional contract on a first team our job is to give them a, an education in football so um, 
we have to be seen to be teaching them lots of different ways. So when they go into any manager around, they'll know how to play football. Um, but at the same time, they need clarity. So what we have done quite consistently so far this year is we've kept our formation the same for clarity, but our, our model of how we play, um, we break it down into um, situations within the game. And uh, we're quite specific on detail within them areas. Um, so you can call it a philosophy or whatever you want to call it, but a style or an expectation of how we play. And then we just tinker it depending on the pitch we're on, the weather, the opposition, um, because football is about winning. Yes, it's about development, but you can develop and win. It's a myth if you don't think you can do both. Um, and these boys are now adults. Oh, when I say adults, they are eligible for adult football. You've seen George Quantrill and um, Carol Wainbrick. They've come out of Norwich City Academy and they've chose to come to our course, which is a real honour for us. Um, and they are 16 and 17 years of age and they are starting in Deer and Town men's team, Ryman League football, in real football. And for me, that's a real um, sort of gives us real happiness in what we're doing is, is right. We had some rain at the start of the week, but it's still not enough. Um... Uh, obviously just doing the final cut, um, I will mark today um, and then probably give it another roll over, uh, light roll in the morning just to check for rabbit damage because we've got a couple of rabbits still buzzing about. Just before you go, just talk us through this little number here. Just talk us through the little number that you're oh, what, what, the, the, the yeah. old, the old, oh, this yeah. is Dennis 860. Um, all the pro clubs use these, um, it, they've probably got six, seven, eight of them all going on the pitch at the same time. Well, I've got just just got this one, um, I've serviced it myself so I know it's kept up to, to um, uh, top level. Um, but it really, really, really does the, the business. It's not, a, it's not, it hasn't got a heavyweight roller so it doesn't compact the soil, um, but it just puts that nice sheen. Uh, it's a cylinder cut, um, you know. All, like I say, all the top clubs use these, um, and we're very lucky to have this one. Um, if we win the lottery, I'll get another couple of them. Uh, How's doing a great job? Oh, just, just talk us through what you do on a match day for the boys. Uh, well, they have a breakfast, beans on toast, cheese on top, whatever they want, eggs maybe. And then we do a main meal for after the match. During the game? Okay, teas, coffees. Teas, yeah. yeah. And I hear you're a little bit of a secret fan out the window following the score, is that right? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> Good. Are you proud of the boys so far this season? Oh yeah.
As you can see by them, they score a lot of goals. Joint five scorers in the league. So you need to make sure that you're defensively on it. You need to keep them as far away from our goal as possible. So that means we need high energy up the pitch with our pressing. We need to be set up right away from the ball. Our goalkeeper needs to have a really good start position. And we need to keep them away from us. All right? The encouraging thing, they let a lot of goals in. Eight goals in three games against teams that are down here. Game plan. All right, so this is, again, taken on from the last three league games and especially our last FA Youth Cup game. So on the ball, we need to move more when the ball is away from us. So I'm saying you centre forwards. When the ball's getting popped around the back four, you need to make more than one run. So don't make a run and then stand still. You need to continuously move. And that might mean you rotate your centre midfield players. All right? Um, if you are in space, stand still. I think, again, I mentioned this to Carol on Thursday at half time. If you stand in there and got no one around you, stand still, stand in your half turn, get the ball. If you're in space, no need to move. All right, someone comes into your space, get out of it, someone else comes in. Really, really simple. And simplicity is key. The reason you've done so well the other night, the reason you scored the winner, was because you, you kept the ball alive, Carol, and you kept it simple. And then George kept it simple. Tink's done the thing in the right area. And then it was a simple pass across the box and a simple tap in. Everything's simple. And I get the feeling that you lot are starting to trust each other a little bit more. So it should be more simplistic. However, I think you can get better. Defensively, distances when defending. So distances between centre backs and centre midfielders. Distance between midfielders and strikers. Distances between centre backs and full backs. And when I say distances, you know what the distances are. They get worse as you get tired. Okay? So again, it stands concentration and communication when you're tired. Set up when the ball is away from you. So I mentioned to Tinks, um, and it will, it will be Tinks and Toby today, it will be when we have got good possession up the other end of the field, can you get it in front and behind a centre forward rather than both on the side? And then Lee's big on this, communication. Talk, talk, talk. Especially when you're tired, talk more. Um, transition, step up the pitch quicker, so when we're on the break, centre backs push up quicker, goalkeeper get out quicker. All right, keep the distances narrow, just less running for people. Um, take chances on the break. One of my biggest disappointments in the first half is when we had good breakaways. We didn't didn't take them. Didn't make didn't make people work enough, or we didn't punish them. You've got to start to punish people, boys. All right, you have. You're letting people off the hook. Stop letting people off the hook. Kill them. All right, when they're there to be had, absolutely finish them. Set place four. Do not run until the ball is kicked. Again, all underneath the ball. Just get out of the area. Get together. As it's kicked, watch the flight of the ball, attack your zone that you've been told, head the football, or volley the football, wherever it comes. That one was the biggest concern for me, and I want to see a massive, massive improvement um, in that, because I'm telling you now, if I do not see an improvement in this, okay, you are going to be in early for the next game, doing an hour and a half of that before a game, and you ain't going to be wanting to do that, trust me. Just on that one, boys, I think what you do is you, you pick a man up, but you don't pay attention to anything else that's going on around you. Someone needs, well, you all need to take responsibility to make sure every one's picked up. There's so many times when someone sneaks in late at the back post and no one's picked them up. And sometimes it may mean that you can't stay out. Cal, you, you stayed out on Monday, didn't you? Sometimes you have to come back in. Right? Because it's more important to defend than think about that, that next ball out. Right, so make sure you're aware if you are the man out, that you're looking and going, I need, to, I need to be in. If you don't need to be in, then you don't need to be in, that's fine. But at least be aware of it. And then when you're marking, if you're standing next to someone who's good enough, you actually need to hold them. That's not the bottom. Right? So people can't get a run on you and do like clever things like just holding the shirt just behind so the ref can't see you and they can't get a run on you. The, the key words I'll pick out um, for the performance I'm expecting from you today uh, that. So I expect you to be ruthless today when you get your chances and I expect the intensity levels to remain a lot higher for longer than what they did on Monday. And, and let me repeat myself, I've never been prouder of watching a set of players play football 35 minutes in all my life. That was a different class. But football matches at 90 plus minutes. Right? And we want more out of you, don't we guys? Want more out of you. When you get better. The more 
more teams know about your reputation to play football, the more they're going to do what one or two, one of two things. Yeah, drop off or press high. They're not going to play sort of balanced football against you. They can come after you. And obviously, what you experienced on on um, Monday was a first team manager absolutely tearing into his youth players, and the old term rocket hair drive treatment comes into play and he ramped their work rate up and their desire by about 400% and they went man for man with you and went quite high press, press for you, didn't they? Now, the natural thing would be to say go longer because it stretches the game a little bit more, but I think you're better than that. I think you can get out of it. And the, the problem we were having, so when we were, when we were pushing up the pitch and our full backs were getting on and we were trying to play out one of the things that was happening was, was Kwame was starting to come into this area and he was being man-marked. Right, that would be the only thing I'd say tactically from that last game you need to change. Apart from that, I just want you to play your natural game. I don't want to overcomplicate it. I think you play wonderful football. Right, I just don't think you adjusted very well to that, what happened. So are you clear on that now? How to get out of that? Obviously, if you're going over to the dressing room, you've now got a good... 40 minutes before we start the warm-up, so we start the warm-up bang on 1 o'clock. So you're out there, ready, um, and it's going to be 25 minute warm-up. Um, so you've got time to chill out, do everything as a team, make sure you've got the numbers right, and the board to skip, you need to get the memory stick, you need to print the set pieces in there, and make sure the numbers and everything are correct. Um, and then I'm asking of you, can you make it 12 in a row? What have you got about you to stay at top of this league and make it 12 wins in a row? All right, fight for your clean sheets. Okay, all the best. teams playing, a uh, few things I'd like to say, team spirit absolutely spot on on both sides. The way that you play the game in the right manner, working for each other, playing the feet, slowing it down, all the things that I'd expect to see in a good team, you boys have exhibited that today. It's also important to win in the right way, isn't it? Yeah, Not just about the score, but to win in the right way. Particularly, like the smile, on Cat 1's team, when Cat 2 came round the pitch singing, <laughs> after they'd won their results. So two very good wins, very impressed by what I'm seeing, very impressed by what I'm seeing with the relationships between you all. All the best. That's what I want to see going for the rest of the Over to Luke. Hang on, Luke. Are you ready? Yes. Over to Luke Milligan. What are we singing? Boys, I think we need all of you on your feet. Here we go!
Matty Grant. How are you doing, boys? Good, thank you. Buzzing after that win. Okay, so you've uh, you've just added Cat to local derby, um, and you've won four to at home. How are you feeling, Coops? Um, a bit gutter, we didn't keep the clean sheet, but really good performance to the boys. Disciplined, worked hard, didn't fall into their game. They lost their heads a little bit, and we freed it up in the first half. Good work, hard work from the front. Put pressure on them, got three early goals. Now, Grandy, you've been called Johan Cruyff. Um, is it for the right reasons? No. No, not really. I tried a cross turn on the edge of my box and lost it. Now, but the has gone mental. How did, you feel, how did you feel about that? Um, not really happy with it, I'm honest. Let's get rid of it. No, nowhere, nothing for me there. It's the wrong place. Grande, obviously, players like you can take risks like that, can't they? I mean, you know, all that ability. Uh, just about doing it in the right areas, isn't it, Grande? And, and actually, great. James, if you'd like to come in here, Cat 2 manager, you've had back-to-back -back wins, James. What's been the secret? Hard work, dedication, a togetherness for the group. The fact that my goalkeeper is a rock at the back. Great kicking. Matt Grant holding number four, talking across the pitch, everyone working for each other. And uh, Charlie, Cat 1, um, recorded your fourth straight win, fourth straight clean sheet. Kaz, talk to you for the game. Uh, yeah, first half was quite poor and I think uh, you got it to the final third about 20, 30 times, only scored one. Um, defensively was quite solid again, to the clean sheet for the game. Um, they didn't really have any notable chances, should have been like 10, possibly 15. Charlie, first start for Cat 1, obviously you've had a little bit of injury problems and obviously um, you know, you've been kept out of the team by good performances in, from other defenders. Um, what did you think in your first game? Uh, I thought first five, to, for, to first five ten, minutes, ten minutes, I was a bit shaky. Uh, set myself into the game, got on the ball a little bit, passed it about and just worked my way through it really. Uh, supported Carroll on the left hand side a few times. And then as the game went on, got into the box, put a few crosses in, had a shot in the first half. And yeah. Team, Kaz, what's been the secret to this so far? The good start. Really no secret. It's just hard work on the training pitch. Um, two or three set pieces today. Um, there's no secret. It's just hard work. James Luke, um, congratulations today. Um, back to back wins in the Cat Two League. Um, James, how did it go? I think preparation was key today. Um, we spent a good 15, 20 minutes in the classroom prior to the game, didn't we? Mm. Um, set pieces, um, what to do with dead ball, in and out possession. Um, and collectively, everybody worked really hard. The football's really simple. We just need to defend with one more and attack with one more. And I think I think we did that today. Um, the second years did help physically. Um, we played a, a big athletic side today. Uh, we played quite direct football. Um, and we were able to cope with it. Um, goalkeeper was kicking was good. Um, communication across the back four right the way through. Um, two early goals settled them. Um, obviously goals changed games. And um, yeah, hard work paid off. Sometimes you, you work hard and you play better and sometimes you don't get the results and we got the result we deserve, I think, today. Luke? Yeah, like James said, we had them in the classroom before kickoff and we, we had a clear game plan that we worked on in training yesterday and this morning. And to a man, every single one of them carried the game plan out brilliantly and everyone done the jobs they had to do everyone done what was required gave a hundred percent and the and the result matched the performance so what's next for cat two boys i think consistency um consistently doing the right things and having a good balance a good balance of first years a good balance of second years uh and keeping the high standards that we've got not only on the training field but in the classroom the environment that we're we're setting is they're flourishing uh, and they're working for each other. I think our CEO came up and watched today and, and spoke to the boys and said he was so surprised as how pleased the Cat 1 boys were for the Cat 2. So, you know, it doesn't matter what, what team, whether it's under 18s, Cat 2 or Cat 1, everyone's got the same desire and the same work ethic, which is great. Luke, 11 wins on the bounce. Is that a fluke? No, no, it's not. Um, some people might say it is, but just from the Cat 2 game today, the team spirit, the togetherness of the group. You know, last year I, I stepped into a coaching role 
with Cat 2. I was a little disappointed at the togetherness of the side. We didn't do as well as we maybe should have done. But this year is completely different. You know, every single one of them loves wearing the shirt and it's quite easy for people to be disappointed if they're in a Cat 2 side. But none of them are and they use it as a motivation to kick on and prove to us why they should be in maybe the Cat 1 side. James, obviously you have a massive influence with a lot of the lads that come into the first year through your, your PBS setup. Um, must be quite a proud thing to see them grow over the, over a year under your tutorship um, and then coming into the season in the classroom like they have. Yeah, and it's the, it's the softer skills, it's the value added to them really because though people don't see the, the punctuality, the leadership, the confidence, all the things that ties into to football and sport. Um, and those are the things that uh, are carried through, not only on the football pitch, but into their lives. Um, Self-confidence, self-worth. Some of the boys I can actually have a, a conversation with where before that they, they wouldn't be able to speak, they'd be looking at the floor, and now they can quite they can do presentations, they can talk in front of members of the group. So there's lots of stuff that they take on board from their football. Luke, lastly, big game tomorrow night in the league against CSF, and then yeah. draw for the FA Youth Cup Friday. Yeah. Exciting times ahead for you, young man. Yeah, um, tomorrow is probably one of the biggest games of the season for the under 18s. CSF have had a great start to the season. Um, so we're not taking it lightly. We haven't dropped a single point yet this season, and I don't plan on doing that tomorrow night. And Friday, great occasion. Hopefully, all the boys can get together. We can see the draw come in. Nice home time would be lovely. And uh, yeah. Hopefully we can keep this winning run going. Well done, lads. I'm here with uh, Cat One managers Lee and Tom. Uh, five nil win today. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. I'm happy that they kept another clean sheet. And obviously, what's that? Twelve games now. Eleven. Eleven games now we've won. Good start. Tom. Yeah, just to reiterate, well, he said clean sheet. We said that before the game. Um, it's always nice to score five in any game, isn't it? But I think we'd have taken one nil. I just want to build off the solid displays that we've been having really. Are you finding it difficult with the amount of games in a week at the minute with squads or? To be quite honest, it was really good today because there's some boys got an opportunity who haven't played Cat 1 football um, and they've gone in and, and done really well so it's probably going to be harder next week to make a decision with boys coming back who to pick in the Cat 1 squad. Yeah, I think again like 11 wins on the bounce is, is lovely. It's a, it's a new record we've set and the boys should be really proud of it. But um, like I'll tell you what's coming at the right time, the Peterborough game next Tuesday, which if anyone's watching, 7.45 kick-off Alders Park, free entry, bar open, kitchen open. It'd be great, carnival atmosphere. Get as many people here as possible. It's a real good prep game for our FA Youth Cup um, experience. But actually, I think me and Lee would quite like our players to have a reality check in the nicest possible way. Because we're at a level starting to get a little bit confident about us winning and I think sometimes you need a little bit of a you know wake me up and hopefully they will Peterborough I'm, I'm believing that Peterborough might provide us with that fourth uh, clean sheet in a row must be delighted yeah I think they're just buying into what we're, we're doing on the training pitch so we've been working really hard on just basic things really communication um, spaces between defence and midfield centre halves and, and full backs and and they're buying into it, they're listening, they're communicating really well. Um, and it's, it's down to them, isn't it? They're, they're taking on board what we're, we're trying to do and they're putting it into practice in the game. I think it links to fitness. Um, you, you know, we've, we've set a certain standard about not playing if, you don't, if you're not at a certain level of fitness. And from my point of view, tactically, we can now play on the halfway line and, um, and, and, and press and keep the pressure on for, the, you know, for a good duration of the game. And, if we get done in behind, we're quick enough to cover and the goalkeeper's in a good position. So, because we're quite fit, uh, we're able to keep the other team as far away from our goal as possible. No, it's not rocket science, but um, that's our model for this year that we're trying to trying to do. The harder the games, the less we're able to do it for that intensity over a period of time. So that's why, again, I think the Peterborough game will be a real good test for us. I think the, the other good thing is we haven't had the same back four for any of them games as well. So everyone has come in... Um, it's just slotted in and, and taken up the same role, so good like squad performance. Okay, everyone's now go ho gone home from the match day. Obviously, food in the bar done, everything clean and tidy the way that it should be. Last job of the day for us is to upload team sheets to the ECFA website, update the scores online. 
track player minutes um, so that coaches can reference it for the next selection of games um, and then make sure things like match reports etc and videos are all uploaded online um, thank you so much for everyone for tuning in for this uh, this first uh, documentary episode hope you've enjoyed it there'll be more coming one every week on a Wednesday um, give us a follow pass the message on and um, it's been great to, to have you cheers <laughs>